Okay, guys. So we have uh, you will never guess unless you've seen it in the title already. But today we have God Chef contest, which is a May cook off, I believe. Um, I'm not even on the Barbados anymore, just regular flat, so uh, completely not ready. But it's a long contest, so it's fine. I mean, it takes some time to load problems in, anyway, so. Okay, some error occur. That's fine, that's fine. Sounds like code chef, so I definitely feel like start remembering things. Uh, but that's fine, it will reload shortly, as usual. I may as well just use this time to get back to Barbados. Um, or at least that's uh, what the internet thinks about this in background. Okay, can we please go to the problems already? Thank you. Oh, only five problems this time. I remember that usually there are like six or seven. Uh, okay. We might, may as well just <coughs> create a separate file for every problem. Oh no, that's not what I wanted here. That's what. Okay. Gain max. Okay. Uh, again, I mean after some cut forces contest that I remember. Let's see if anyone has already solved Thompson because uh, two minutes has passed. No, okay. Uh, I don't remember whether the problems are arranged according to difficulty, I believe no. So maybe we'll have to read everything. Permutation is an array, okay. A chef has two permutation arrays A and P of length set. Chef performs the, the following three types of operations on the array A. Uh, type 1 permutes the array A according to the order defined by the permutation P. Good. Uh, X, Y swap the elements in output of the position of the elements. Okay. For each operation of type 3, Chef wants us to output the elements at position X in the array. Oh, that doesn't look great. doesn't look great, right? Am I right? Like swapping is fine, most probably. I'm offsetting. Position. No, I think it's easy. Like uh, we just have to, permutation P define some cycles. Uh, we just want to partition these cycles and for each cycle just start in the vector and store offset potentially. Yeah, I think so. Permit there. Uh, okay, I need the input description. First, okay. We have several top. Yeah, sure. That's exactly what we wanted. Um, A of size M, P of size M. Elements, I don't think we have to do anything with them. A is a permutation. Oh, that's interesting. I don't actually think that that makes any difference. I don't think that it makes any difference. 
I don't, uh, no, it does not make any difference. That A is a permutation, you may as well just from 1 to N, right? So we have to decrement these guys. Uh, bro, what are you going to do next? Cycles. I think I want to. Th that's not actually a DFS, uh, but. No, it is a DFS. Yeah. Uh, from index, and I don't actually want to return anything. I think I will also need. I used first simply do a set that's a close strong and then for not not for but um, uh, cycles back wash back I let's put DFS of the I Sounds reasonable. I just very terrible way to partition permutation cycles. So I don't. I just don't think about a better way. Actually, no. I think it's terrible. It's worth rewriting it. So we'll copy V and Y. We'll do something while. V is not equal to E, it should be faster. Like um, no, actually, if I is not used, then it starts a new cycle. Now we are talking, now we are talking. Uh, what do we want? First of all, we want to create a new cycle. Very reasonable. Second, we want to push back i. And i gets p, uh, no, 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 not like that. We push back p and v gets p of v. Uh, sounds reasonable. Now we don't have these cycles. And I want a function that will take in an index, uh, original index, will return an index in the resulting array. Sounds, sounds quite reasonable. Like after operations. Uh, so shift and zero. Oh, yeah, I believe comes with that. So first of all, we would like to know actually to which cycle it goes, <laughs> which is uh, map vector cycle ID. Actually, we can use it instead of used, right? Also, I did not change the used. Okay, it's cycle ID. Initialize everything is not in a cycle. If cycle is negative one, then cycle of i gets one. No, actually, here we will just say, like, hey, cycle of v gets, gets what? Uh, cycle of i. Or we can just say, like, yeah, no, okay. Cycle of files get cycles size. And we place back, then we say like okay, v is here. Mm, we update accordingly. It doesn't matter where we update actually. Okay. 
so now we want cycles cycles add cycle id of index i We also need position in cycle, I believe. Oh, it's taken already. Cycle position, okay. CP of V gets cycles back six. Uh, cycle position of index I, then plus shift, total shift that we have accumulated during the entire event. Then modular I just was getting too messy. Modular cycle uh, size. I believe that's what we want to return. That's an index. Okay. Uh, good. Now we do have some queries. Type I think I just in command shift. have to update some useful information. I don't believe that it's the simplest problem of this problem set. Like we, wish, we must be solving something like Q3 at the moment because I just didn't look which one was the easiest one? Okay, okay, so yeah, that, that looks reasonable. That number of solves looks reasonable. Uh, so I want to take indices of x and y because this is actual gets index. Wait, 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 wait. I would actually like to get inverse index, right? I want to know who is in the position. That guy, if we had three shift, then it's actually a guy who was three elements before. Okay, so potentially I, I can Do we really want to do that? I don't know. Oh, that's not how you do it. Okay. Take modula. I believe then we can add the model. And we can take. I, I don't remember how it works. In, uh, C++, sorry. And I probably want to return this, actually, now that I think about it. Because, why I was getting these two guys? Because I think that these are actually what I want to swap. Uh, or else it's going to be easy. Want to add put element on position x, which is get inverse index. Oh, now that's important that they are as it a is a permutation. Okay. Because otherwise we just have some 
uncomfortable issues. Like how do we determine who is who and, and all the stuff like that. The problem is that here I want to swap like a lot of uh, extra information about guys. I have to swap CP. Uh, do I do? What do I want to swap? I want to swap elements that are currently in position X and Y. Elements that are currently in positions X and Y are I and J. So I assume that I can swap. Sorry, can swap CP of I, CP of J, C of I, C of J, swap I and J themselves. That sounds like a lot of swaps. Do we actually need those? Yeah, like I, I and J are only like there. Okay. I believe that if we swap this, then we are like done. Is it so? Uh, now that's unfortunate <laughs> that I have to P7 swaps. Why is it P7 swaps? Not like P1 swaps, P2 swaps, P7 swaps. Uh, not cool. How am I getting zero? Tycho is well, that that kind of explains things, but not really. I assume that I want to do it like this. <sighs> oh, that's an index. That's an index. I probably want to return that guy. Is it so? No, it doesn't look like it. Should I swap A, I, and A, J as well? I'm trying to like cheese it in <laughs> without debugging, but apparently it doesn't work like that, fortunately. Okay. Well, we need a bit of debugging. That's fine. Like, it's long contest, so we are not in the hurry. Uh, two, three, one. Two, three, and one. 
It actually changes nothing. We have only one cycle. Okay. So we only have one cycle and it rotates like in some direction. The idea is, I believe that the idea is that you want to, you want to model these operations in a cheaper way than linear in complexity, right? Sounds very reasonable. Uh, now to do that, you probably want like that cycle decomposition of your permutation, and you probably want like global offsets. Vertex like zero is in zero cycle at index zero, which is incorrect. Oh, oh. Is that a problem? How much of a problem is that? Mm. I feel like I should be looking over P actually. Vertex 0 is at the second place in the cycle, which is correct, and vertex 1 is at the 0th place, and vertex 2 is at the 1st place, which is correct, but I'm kind of worried about something more intelligent from the test cases. Uh, so I will add like 4 or 5, it doesn't matter, I will add 5 here. Probably some operations. Let's add some more operations. One and three, four. Yeah, I can just save it here. No. It doesn't have to be the vertex three is at position one, and it's more or less correct from some point of view. I think it didn't matter that much. That's okay. Uh, let's uh, just do these permutations ourselves to check if our code is reasonable. So first we apply this permutation to A, which means that assume that if original was an identity, then we just get this, right? And it says uh, like, oh, 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 oh. most probably. Okay, three and four. And then it says like, please swap second and third element. We say, okay, 
we can do that for you. And it says, please give us uh, first the, uh, the first element, which should be two actually. So what we did. Okay. I don't understand. Is there an explanation for sample? Initial array is one, two, three. It changes as follows. Three, one, two. Why is it, does it change as follows? B first becomes a B first. I don't understand why it got rotated this way. No, 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 I don't understand. B first, B first should get A at B first. B first is two. So this should get this. No, this should get this. Am I wrong? Do I not understand something here? Okay, we'll have like two test cases, it's fine. looks like it corresponds to what the answer says but why is it correct i don't understand i don't think that it's correct bit of debugging here and there That is completely not true. That is completely not true. You cannot have an array which has duplicates in it. Uh, and it goes wrong after the first permutation. So like after we take shift, it says, oh, I'm out. I don't want to lose it anymore. Uh, get reverse index. Hmm. It knows what is the cycle of this guy. It knows. In what cycle in permutation P belongs this guy. So it says like, okay, okay. I'm gonna tell you the inverse index. Take the cycle without copying it, take the length of the cycle, and returns the element that is shifts elements back from this guy in the cycle. How is it ever not one to one? Yeah, permutations are definitely not our strengths. That's cycle. This is index in the cycle. This is vertex that traverses our guys. Actually, I don't think that there should be any difference between traversing like this and traversing like that. reason no okay it 
should have a dialog like this. It doesn't change anything. Medically, our get more syntax doesn't work if it returns if it's not one view I'm mapping. Why? Probably because we swap too many of that information. How is that possible? And I don't think that we should be swapping these guys. Maybe we should swap just A. Like one, one of the combination of these statements is correct. We just have to figure out which one. Uh, still doesn't look great. So the only thing I wanted is to swap the actual values in A. And it doesn't work for some reason. Just bring those guys back. Cycles one, two, zero. That, that's correct. We only have one cycle. Cycles info. Vertex zero, vertex one, vertex two is in the corresponding cycle. Good. Uh, no, is it good? Actually, I don't understand if there's any difference between this and this. It's worrying me that I don't see the difference. Like there's more or less no difference. No, you probably want to start from here. Yeah, I believe this much more. Still, that's incorrect. Because get index basically, get inverse index basically gets everything wrong. I just said that that's get index. This body, kick him out. I want to go back. I uh, just basically don't understand why this doesn't work.
Well, it does look a bit like a mess, but that's okay. So we query index zero. That like it's in the zeros. In the zeros guy. And then cycle position is zero, and here cycle position is one. So somehow, somehow, we're getting this information. We take the cycle, we take our cycle indices, we take the model, and we get to the same results for i equal 1, i equal 2. But CP is different. How is that possible? Uh, I don't know. Why did that happen? Line 58, that's a syntactic error. I do agree. That is a syntactic error. Oh. We have this, get the same index. We get the same index for two different guys. If it has to do something with okay, okay, then that looks very promising. I must say, clearly, the inferred type was unsigned, and therefore, we had some issues. Okay. The array becomes three, one, two. For some reason it corresponds to whatever they wanted, then three two one. Three two one five four five four one. Do we have actually between cycles operations here? We don't. Uh, that's not good. Uh, let's say I want to swap this guy and this guy. Oh I didn't have to recompile. To reswap indeed for becomes just here. I actually would like to make sure that it works as expected. Uh, to that shift three to one five four right three one three one two five four then we swap Two and one. This is this operation. And we ask what is the first element? It's three. Then we uh, rotate everything again. It becomes uh, one, three, two, four, five. Four, five rotated back. One, three, two rotated once more, I believe. Then we swap four and three, apparently. So second and fourth element, then we rotate it. Again, here and here we rotate it. Okay, I, I'm pretty sure that it's correct. Damn. No. <laughs> this is like the worst thing you can say in a contest. Uh, <laughs> because then you must probably get it wrong. Okay. Uh, that's that's, that's the... By the way, how many people saw this? Oh, so that's just like clearly not the easiest problem. 
which is promised. So it means basically that we solve like second solve, easiest problem, or at least I hope that we did. Yes. Yes. Okay, so clearly double burger burgers burgers. I don't eat burgers, do you? Guys, do you eat burgers? I some are actually like quite beefy, but there is better beef to eat if you want to eat beef. And so we have taken an eating challenge from Chef and now we have to eat exactly why burgers. Why would I do that? I, I don't need burgers. You will eat it in the following way. You will eat in the following way. In the first minute you will eat exactly X burgers, and every minute after that you will eat exactly twice the number of burgers you ate in the previous minute, since you can get tired of eating, Chef also allow you to take a break from eating for exactly one minute. When you start it again after taking a break, your eating streak resets. Okay. Okay. With the length of your eating streaks in minutes, Chef requires it all AI power was distinct. Wait, I can take more breaks, right? But it will okay, okay, but they will all take one minute, okay. Chef, find the minimum number of minutes you need to eat exactly by burger, so that means that it's impossible to do so. Oh, all my eating streaks are different. Okay, that, that's not particularly complicated, is it? No, it's some mass. Basically, some mass that we will figure out in like yeah, several seconds. Unless we blunder and read the wrong lens input type. Um, fascinating. And we don't have uh, tests when it's impossible, so I suggest that we create some such tests. Well, uh, that's not enough, not uh, earlier enough. I think it's actually quite hard to eat this, uh, if you have this, and also... No, 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 no. Three, six. Three, six, so it should be also impossible. Because... Okay, and now we can talk about mass, uh, so... That's the eating streak that you can get. So we see some very transparent patterns here. Uh, like this guy increased very quickly. I don't even want to think how quickly they do increase. Uh, but I believe that they are at most... Oh, actual, never mind. Uh, that, that is incorrect. But basically, ever since, uh, clearly, if I model X, and we output negative 1, then we are done with that problem, but it's not, only, not the only case when the answer does not exist. When, uh, I should say when it's not possible to eat because the answer is negative one. Uh, and of course it's the same with writing that it's not equal to zero. Otherwise we can eat uh, one, three burgers, three x. Uh, I should just say like, I guess divided by x. One, three, four, clearly it's possible, then What's next number? Seven, eight, ten, eleven. Fifteen, sixteen, eighteen, I suppose. Is there a pattern to which values are possible and which are not? I don't think so. Okay, what, what is next one? Uh, no, next one is actually plus 419, plus 722, 23, 
Oh, these guys are quickly, uh, they increment by at least factor of two and therefore the only way you can try to do something is uh, greedily. You just have to do it greedily because uh, if you don't take, because all of these guys together are smaller than this one. If you don't take it, you are lost. Uh, No, 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 I should be doing like this. I just do it like this, so I have like a uh, weight. I don't know how it's called. Weight gets decreased. What am I doing? Weight is greater than zero. No, it was a bad idea. Just let's face it. Okay. So one LL, I shift it to the left, so minus one, 60 and uh, one, it should be fine. If I is at least three, uh, uh, let's decrement it by three. Wait, do we have to, oh, we want to print minimum number of minutes. There is not really such a thing as minimum number of minutes because there is only like one way we can do it. We already proved it. Uh, minutes zero uh, should not be long. Actually, quite short. That's a break. That's a break right here. And here we basically just ask how many we should take. Oh, by zero? No, it doesn't matter. It doesn't make sense. If y, then we need to print impossible. Oof, tough. Let's not print many. Seven five, but that's not correct because we should be incremented not by W but by uh, I instead. Three, four, negative one, negative one. That's exactly what I thought. We probably should actually also add some huge test cases. Zero, 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 zero. Uh, it's fine. Probably like this, and then like this. Three, four, same values. So that, that that is basically like pretty close to what is the limit. As you can see, it all later has like seventy percent of the limit, and it doesn't uh, overflow or anything. 
travel I should also ask about like what, what about 15 no 22 22 is a good sounds like a good value to ask about because it does not consist of one string so it should uh, test our breaking so 8 minutes because 22 is 15 plus 7 15 is 4 minutes 7 is 3 minutes and there's one break Looks very reasonable to me. As usual. bad I mean we solved this we solved this the next I suppose is this and also accuracy is quite high potentially implying that uh, constraints are not super tight which is good following zero uh, also we solved actually I think we are solving the first problem for a while and then we solved the second reasonably quickly so if we should be able to get sort as well so we are given a tree of n nodes rooted at node 1. I mean, after we survived permutations, bruh, trees, that's like kindergarten. Uh, each node y, i, y, u, u. Each node u initially has a positive uh, value a, u, i, a, a. A, u associated with, I don't know, it's... <laughs> What's up with me? I just uh, no. you randomly ch choose one node in a tree and change it, its value to zero. If any node u has a value equal to zero, a random node v will be chosen in the subtree of u. Not not the same, and the values a u and u a v will be swapped. And the value of the node v will become zero and the process will continue until the zero is on the lift node. At this point we will call the tree the final tree. It's exactly one node with a value equal to zero in the final tree and that's not to the lift node. Okay. The task is to tell how many different final trees are possible. Two final trees are different if there exists at least one node u such that the value of the not u in one final tree differs from the value of the not u in the other final tree. Then what? Okay, okay, I think I got it. It must be dp. dfs dp. Like. Nine times out of ten. Then what exactly is going on? That's uh, that's a good question. Uh, start with M. Good. Oh, well, that's a tree, right? Because that's. Rooted at not one. Okay, cool. I I just got confused because this like for trees, for rooted trees we actually have a separate input format. I don't know what's this this does. Oh, I mean that's not much of a deal, but if you have a muscle memory of writing some template uh, input reason function, that's not good to have different input formats for the same thing. Uh, anyways, uh, I'm talking about things that I should not be talking about. Uh, no, no, no. Good, good. Oh, interiors AI, which can be, which can be the same thing. 
Okay, now that's a bit annoying. But there can be equal elements in A. As I assume it should not be much of, make much of a difference. Okay, we, we definitely need to draw something for this guy. Oh, we do have an example. Why didn't I copy it? We actually have three test cases for this problem. Wow. Bruh, first is not particularly interesting, I assume. So in the first case, we have unbelievable tree. And the answer to this case is of course one. In the second case, we have a tree with four vertices, which are connected uh, one to two, and two to three and four. And the values are one, 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 two. Okay. Change can swap. Okay. Uh, and then the last subtree, last tree, I should say, has vertex one, then vertices two and three. Oh, that's a, okay. Okay, we got. Okay. Uh, how do you get different subtrees? I assume that uh, in each like you will remove remove one one value. Here it becomes only this, right? Uh, it's not particularly interesting. Here we are doing B DFS, right? So we are in this guy. We should return something useful from it. What we can return? We can say like, okay, uh, I've been just like given zero. Okay, that, that's one way. And basically remove it, like saying that this guy is now zero means that we should return like value of we should return this one and then one subtree here if this becomes zero we should return one and two because the value of two is somehow important Now that guy has to make some decisions. Like, what will, actually, what is the answer for this tree? We can get one, two. We can get one, one. We can get two, one. Right. So the answer should be three. So. Okay. Uh, so 
So clearly, clearly anything that comes from this subtree and everything that comes from this subtree are different because they have zeros in different leaves. Mm, that's for sure. Uh, then what do you have here? Like if it becomes zero, then we should swap him for a random value in a subtree. And we know that random values in subtree are one and two. one and two somehow we, like this two creates a new resultant tree because it's different from the value which we currently have and this one does not create anything new It feels like we multiply everything by 2 if the value is different and then we don't multiply by 2 if the value is the same. So with 1 there is 1 tree and then with 2 there are 2 trees. Do we multiply or we don't multiply? Sure. Listen, this guy will for sure it will return for one. This guy will return one one. This guy will return two one. This guy will return one one. Now here, if you remove the two, it's different from any of these guys. So the two can be removed in two different ways. Okay, and then one can be removed in one way, four can be removed in one way still. So he will return one, one, two, two, because two can be removed in two different ways, and then four, one. And this, this guy, this guy, so it's like, okay. I have a value of three. Now three can be returned, uh, removed in two different ways in because we have different numbers here and here it's like one one and two one and three two and this guy should return something to us useful right and i don't quite see how it is not uh why is it Oh, it's not 16. Good. That's already good. Uh, I saw that the answer was 16 and for a second. I was like, what? Uh, but what I believe we want to return is like, when the number is the same, when the number is the same, nothing happens to this guy. When the value is different, it just gets transferred up the road, right? So we know that the keys, like for two, the value will be two. For three, 
Now for two the value will be three because here we have one, here we have two. For three value will be two, for four value will be one. And then here, here, I assume that you want to place the sum of all guys that you got. The sum of all values that you got. And the sum of all values that you got is what you want. Uh, how to compute this inefficiently? I'm mostly worried about max. Uh, about sum of everything. Should I be worried? No, no, because my children know their sums, so my sum will be just sum of their sums. Uh, so it doesn't make any sense to worry about that. So yeah, uh, I think we are done with this problem. Uh, in 64 to you pretty like huh? oh that is modded okay that's why you want it modded oh uh, like you, you know that you're getting close to the solution if every con if every constraint that you ever seen plays some role if some constraint don't play a role then uh, probably something is bad because most likely means that you missed some idea or or potential that problem setters are not particularly smart uh, th that's not correct th this is not correct Pretty sure that this guy goes here. Mm -hmm. uh. oh, that's not lambda. That's again uh, smaller to larger heuristic margin. I don't. I. I'm pretty sure that we used it somewhere recently. I like just so. add further beginner contest to to problem E. Easy. Uh, it was yesterday. Yeah, I probably should remember uh, writing similar code. Actual. Uh, that that was kind of okay. Whatever. Um, Get added. First, add key. It's incremented by value. And mod it. And then I return first. Okay. Uh, okay. Good. Here we probably want. I'm not sure why is that so still. Here we go. And the FS of zero. Uh, error is a pointer to map we should ask about a zero and that is our answer no our answer is the sum of all values of r
Can just no okay yeah uh, okay Once again, our vector used, which at the very beginning says it's u of a equals true. Uh, if not used of neighbor, mm, if s of v, as I believe that s should be incremented by error v at a at v because the, this entry is the sum is the sum of uh, all Entries and that's a tree. Or is it? Right, I kind of want to return the sum as a separate function. Uh, I mean, uh, kind of want to return pair of points and log integers because uh, just do it like this. Yeah, then I can do this without worrying too much. Uh, if you didn't see any children, then I suppose it's R at A V should get one. And S should get one. Three S. And here R equals merge R and for we. Are we done? I think we are done. Uh, if it compiles, well. Hmm. Where, where, where is it? Where is it? Nope. And because I used inconsistent naming. What next? Uh, are we as we undefined structure bindings? W is undefined for some reason. Uh, oh, because G was undefined. Does it make much sense. You can just rerun it. Recompile, I should say. One to four. Uh, that's not the answer that you want to see. Well, because we also want to say, like, after all this happens. R at oh no actually that's what we want to say 
I like to be a bit more generic. This gets S. Obviously, this. No, still not doing great. Why? Why, 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 why? Good morning, guys. The Merrigan should take care of everything that's... Uh, and should be modded, but that's not the reason of our problems. Uh, something is going wrong. What is it? So we look our children, we say like, hey buddy, give us the answer please. Yeah, I should just uh, give us the answer please and then the sum. Then the sum will be four. Oh, oh, okay. I think I know what's what's wrong. The sum should be doubled. I think so. You can get doubled, okay. No, 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 no. That's not the reason. I believe we'll have to debug this one as well a bit. Okay, before we return, uh, that may be, may be bad a bit. Yeah, so here we return too much. Why? Because one gets too big value. Why? Because here one gets actual value of four, whereas it should get value of two. Uh, how do we deal with that? Our children return to values like one, one, two, one. Now we are thinking. We actually created a map and then S is equal to 2. Should double everything that's not old. We remember what is the old value? Old value should be should be 1. I think.
Maybe we only need this here. I don't know. I'm pretty sure we're getting this one after some consideration. 616, stolen goods. Uh, why? That is a good question. Oh, I, yeah, that 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 was correct, actually. So the merge map somehow run because we get here we get value four. Uh, so again, how how exactly do we merge them run? We got answer first one one to one from our guys uh, we merge this sync so this sync now contains uh, one maps to one two maps to one and the value of sum is equal to two now value of map at v should become s so this value should become two, and then old value is one. Want to subtract old value from s, multiply s by two, subtract all values. So two gets four minus one, three. And somehow we get wrong. Let me just quickly check. Is it correct here? <sighs> so our guy says that before we do these lines, map is one to one. Okay. Now we take value of the map and the current vertex. It's one. Say so, no, no, no. Now you are two. Because s is two. We can also print s just to make sure. We don't want that. Uh, we is equal to one. S is equal to four. How is S? How is S equal to two here? assume that we just want to write this actually and, and then yeah okay and then only then you want to write this one four fourteen uh, congratulations guys 
Well, at least I think so. Uh, also, uh, this is possible to make here because all these values are modded already because they are returned from DFS. Oh. Yeah, the, the the everything is pretty small actually. Just in case you want to save some time, since that you can do it this way. I don't remember actually if there are penalties for wrong submissions. There should be, right? Because then, otherwise. One answer. Okay, that's not cool. Uh, how successful are we guys? 15, that's an old value. Must be an old value. 21, okay. Our rank is 30, but I do want to get this guy. We have one more R. We should do it. Like, 900%. Can we have some stupid mistakes? Like, can this be negative? I don't think so. S is at least old. So S is at least this guy. I'm just gonna quickly check if there is a penalty. There is a penalty. Yeah, not normal guys solving for, well actually that's, yeah. Quite cool. There, there are penalties and they are worth some time. Oh. Total time here, here. Okay. Uh, how is this 136 and then this is only 132? I think I don't understand something, but okay. We should be able to get this thing going. Can it be something stupid? We didn't mod whatever we wanted to mod. Old. I'm still a bit worried about this guy being negative. That's a guaranteed way. Oh, I mean, it can be negative because uh, S gets modded all the time here. Yeah, I mean, it's definitely worth checking if this was the issue. It may not be the issue though, if like the logic is wrong, but I think that nine times out of... Okay, okay. Oh, that was pretty close. Good. Oof, so we have one hour left and two problems, which uh, basically no one is solving, uh, apart from like big, big guns. <laughs> I assume we can call Maxine one of those. But yeah, uh, I'm interested actually what time it puts us on to. Eight, 
ACM style. ACM means sum of penalties. How? How just? Well, okay, I, I agree. Then these problems were not complicated. They were just bits involved from the implementation point of view. Um, okay, so he solved what he solved. He solved max min. So actually, this guy. And I will, will try to solve it, of course, of course. But I mean, it took like he was done with these problems in half an hour. Is it so? Yes. And he spent he spent forty five more minutes to get it working, and he is like super smart guy, bro. Well, we have more than forty five minutes, so it's not over yet. Uh, and uh, I will make myself a cup of tea and see you in a second. So I will pause recording for now because of that. Okay, so yeah, quite some time passed. Uh, let me actually change some things in. Okay. Alright. Uh, so actually, I, I have no idea how to solve these two guys. And I also noticed that it's a bit buggy, it doesn't show the green check mark here, but it clearly says score 3 here. Uh, we are still on the first page of the ramp list, somehow, miraculous. Uh, quite a few, quite a few names uh, that I do know, and obviously you probably heard of Maxim. Uh, you probably heard about who's the guy? Geothermal, of course. Physics. I believe he was a problem setter of some ad coder contest, and I followed him on Code Forces because of that. Smart guy. We have Vlad Prague, which is Vlad Zavodnik from. Kiev also, we are from the same university. He is uh, he was a grandmaster in code forces. He is now like international master, something like that. Uh, I believe he was to II. Something like that. And we have Kadr, uh, who is uh, Yaroslav Tordakli. Uh, he like he participated, he's from Ukraine, he participated in uh, all these like school competitions back in uh, 2000s, so not even 2010s, just 2000s, so quite an experienced guy, E. Morgan of course, uh, and then we have some people who basically solve only two problems, I don't know why, actually. So I decided like because of that, well, I should probably give you like a quick overview of our solutions. So uh, here you basically have to do some math to observe and you need to know like that mass effect that if you're trying to get some uh, value uh, from coins and the values of coins increment by at least a factor of two, then there, uh, you can only use greedy to get it, and that's uh, like if the values of coins increment by a factor of two, then uh, each coin is bigger than the sum of all smaller coins, or so that's why there, it doesn't make sense no, to not use greedy. That's what we did, and you also have to realize that that's quite a short process, so. You don't have to worry about anything. Here are just permutations. I assume that most, like some problems about permutations, you just want cycle decomposition and you just want to update that thing very carefully. So our idea was that uh, 
everything decomposes into multiple cycles. Then you know that like your query for that guy, just know that you made two rotations overall. So it means like this guy is now this. So you go two backwards and that's your guy. So get index does basically this. It knows the cycle decomposition. It knows the global offset. So it can just go in the cycle to a specific location because cycle is a vector. And some random swaps, they basically do nothing. It's fast to perform. You just swap elements in array A in the correct indices. So yeah. We are very lucky that it's a simple permutation problem because usually I don't solve them, but this time around it was like straightforward. Just understand that you want cycle decomposition and you just then and then you want to write a bunch of careful lines. And this problem I believe that's like very nine times out of ten if you see a complicated 3DP, so we have 3DP. Nine times out of ten, I believe, you can solve it by running a DFS which returns a map. 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 A map contains some keys, some values. Uh, it depends on the problem which keys, which values these are. Usually, keys are like uh, numbers and values are like counts of some object, uh, whether it's a subtree, a resulting tree in our case, I don't know, vertices, anything, can be anything. A key can be depths, values of vertices, anything. So, uh, so I noticed that I've seen a lot of problems this year. And it's a trick that I also learned this year in February, that you can just, if you can phrase your problem so that it's a solvable with DFS returning a map, then you only, the only thing you need is to merge them quickly. And merge is done with uh, smaller to larger heuristic. So basically the, this line, without it, the algorithm is quadratic, with it, it's uh, of n log n. Because the way smaller to larger works, you may be familiar with it from this joint set union or union find, is that uh, you have two sets or maps, you want to merge them. So if one of them is smaller, then it makes sense to merge it here. Right? And there is theoretical proof of why it's fast. So if you consider every element, uh, each time it travels to a different set, the size of the set, the resultant set, gets at least multiplied by two. So for an element to, if an element has like, goes from here to here, to then here, like you can clearly see that each element cannot have a long chain of transfers. Each element can only participate in log and transfers and there are n elements, so uh, here goes your total running time. Very simple. You just, you, you basically like, learn this sync and then you are out of nowhere, you are able to solve like some complicated problems that you would not be able to solve otherwise. One example I remember is code force a shortcut. Yeah, that's the problem where I first met this thing. And if you can say I did basically the same thing. I, well, I actually return multi pointer to multi set of ints. Which probably could have been just an ordered map, but whatever. And basically the same thing, but uh, here I'm very I'm a very good person, I take care of memory that I allocated here with new. I explicitly delete. Hmm? Why not? 
Yeah, the basic was the same. Like you have your DP on a try. Try is basically a tree. So yeah. And yesterday I said quarter, and then I remember some more problems about the sync. It's just I, I see it too much. It's something definitely worth learning because I believe that the difference between people who get two questions and three questions is this problem you can see this problem solved not solved no, that's that's all so basically you learn the sync you solve problems on various competitions you join my discord server you say send me <laughs> and the last part of course is optional but no it's very nice to know that some people appreciate your work and make sure it's useful for them. So yeah, definitely do join if you have any questions or something like that. I don't know what else we can do today because uh, as you can clearly see here, like there are only two people who solved Something. Oh, the actual front end bug is gone. So, still on the first page, still lost to some high school students. <laughs> no, Montgomery Blair is, of course, a famous high school, but we should not, we should not do that. Uh, I believe it partially it's because I did problems in the wrong corner, so I did like a B A C. So the famous thing. You see, like I spent 40 minutes and then I spent 10 minutes. So basically my total penalty could have been half an hour less. It doesn't change a lot. It puts us in like 16th position. Uh, yeah, but it, it was definitely like a mistake to solve problems in the order they are given and not to read errors. But I felt like I, that I read the problem, I know how to solve it, so I just solve it. Now probably it's, it's better to read all the problems. But still, I'm quite pleased with the results. I did not expect that. Also, some people keep submitting. Like, that's very fair play them because I, I mean like you may as well just not submit right if you if you see that like you will be lost after you submit it's fair play I believe the rules must be more like uh, enforcing in this regard Because basically, if you open this problem first, permutations, right? Then you just want to close this contest and uh, forget all about it. Because obviously, nobody likes permutation problems apart from some problem setters. I, I, I really don't know who may like permutation problems. And definitely not someone that I know. So yeah, that's it for today. Uh, bro, I still have to make a, uh, a thumbnail for this. And I may just reuse this. Okay, so I will do this off camera, of course. Uh, thanks everybody for watching. Uh, I hope it was somewhat instructive, especially the part at the end where we like, sort of discussed solutions. So that's it from me. Bye bye. Have a good, uh, I don't know, Sunday evening, I suppose.